Hello everyone and welcome to another video covering the OCR Computing GCSE course. Today we're looking at topic number four which is all about memory, different kinds of memory, uh, the function of different type, kinds of memory and there is a lot of information in this video so I'd recommend you pause it periodically um, so you can read over it and make sure you understand what I'm saying because some of this stuff is, well yeah, it may be, it may be new to you. So it's good to consolidate what you've read. So um, firstly we're going to sort of compare two, like, two types of memory which people like to compare for whatever reason. I think they're actually quite different. I mean they are sort of opposites in a sense but um, I will compare them sort of. So RAM is uh, stands for random access memory and ROM stands for read only memory. Two types of memory you've got to know all about. So RAM is a form of memory that has a very quick read write time and when I say read write time this means um, this is how quickly things can be accessed from it and how quickly things can be stored on it. RAM is a quick form of memory. Uh, slower forms of memory include hard disks and faster forms of memory um, may be a cache in a computer which we'll actually look at in the next slide. So um, RAM is a form of volatile memory. A volatile memory means that it actually loses everything stored in it when power is turned off. Um, so if I describe this function I may be able to explain that slightly better. So the function of RAM is to store all of the data associated with programs that are currently open. So let me give you an example. Um, okay, On my desktop I've got a Microsoft Word icon. So whenever I double click that, all the data that's associated with it, so all of your programs will have some data, some files stored associated with it. So they'll be stored on your hard drive usually, in your program files directory. and temporarily when you open it this data will be copied onto your RAM from your hard drive and this is because RAM is faster to access so when you open a program everything to do with it so um, accessing it using it so Microsoft Word even small things like um, changing the size of fonts changing fonts everything will be quicker than if you had it on a on your hard drive so that's why RAM is used but however because it's volatile, it means everything stored in it is lost when the power is turned off. So if you, you may have experienced this, I definitely have. When you forget to save something, if you're doing an essay, if you're doing a PowerPoint, you forget to save something and there's a power cut, someone turns your computer off. Um, for whatever reason, the computer gets turned off and everything lost, all your work suddenly gets lost. People often confuse this because they see on Microsoft Word, often you have a sidebar that says stuff's been recovered. And this isn't from Varam, this is Microsoft Word periodically uh, saving stuff on behalf of you. People f assume that it means that somehow Varam is permanent, it's, it's not, it's temporarily stored. Um, what's actually happened is they've saved it for you, the program saved it for you. Um, so that's why RAM is used, it's fast. So generally, more RAM means your computer will be faster to use because you can have more programs used at any given point. And actually, RAM is technically infinite depending on how you like you like the theory. We're actually going to look at the theory of virtual memory and what virtual memory is in the next slide. So more, more RAM is better for your computer, but there's no point in having 100 gigabytes of RAM. So the average amount of RAM in a computer might be like 6 gigabytes, whatever. Um, if you have 100 gigabytes of RAM, there's literally no point. Whatever you're going to be doing is not going to use up the 100 gigabytes unless you're doing it for a commercial purpose or whatever. So that amount of RAM is completely excessive. You don't need that amount of RAM. So the more, it's not like um, a processor clock speed where you can increase it infinitely and the performance will increase infinitely. RAM, there's always a limit, and it's the limit is forced with how much work you actually do on your computer or how much how many programs you have open. So if you look at ROM now, ROM is a form of storage that contains pre-recorded data. So if you look at the name you'd sort of have a hunch what it does read-only memory meaning that the data stored on it cannot be altered and can only be read. You can't change what's stored on ROM. So ROM it hasn't got too many functions but it is a form of non-volatile memory which means that everything on it is retained even when power is turned off. So ROM is used in very small amounts, so compared to RAM, RAM maybe you'd have like I said 6, 8 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes of it, ROM maybe you'd have only 30 megabytes, maybe slightly more, maybe slightly less, I'm not 100% sure, but ROM is used to store essential programs on your computer, so if you've ever built a computer you'll know that the operating system isn't pre-installed, I've heard people tell me that they think that the operating system is stored on the processor or some rubbish, it's not like that. Um, 
you, when you if you build a computer you can turn it on hopefully depending on how you built it it turns on first time um, there'll be a boot menu and the boot menu is uh, the data for the boot menu stored on this ROM on your motherboard so if you look what ROM looks like that's what RAM looks like this is um, RAM slots on a computer this is four little sticks of RAM ROM is a little square block on your motherboards in small amounts that contain these essential programs they are often also used in some devices like calculators but that's just an example okay so now we've got to look at three different types of other other memory um, one of which is virtual memory and I mentioned this because this is all about RAM virtual memory is a manage uh, me a uh, Beg your pardon, a memory management procedure that comes into effect when all the RAM has been used up in your computer. So, data that's been held in the RAM, some of it gets put on your hard drive temporarily, which means that the capacity of your RAM is extended because you have this memory stored virtu virtually, um, that was me doing inverted commas, on your hard drive. So it does extend the RAM capacity, but the read-write time of a hard drive is so much slower than the RAM that everything accessed from your hard drive is slower. So the plus point is that it extends your, your RAM capacity. The negative point is that everything is accessed slower. So the data that gets chosen to be sent on the disk is often that that you haven't used recently. So you may, if you have a program minimized that you haven't used in a while, that you haven't maximized in a while, it may take a while to load when you open it up. Um, and it may not even work because it's a good solution, virtual memory, but it's not perfect. So another type of memory is cache memory. I used to always call it cache, sound like a bit of an idiot, cache memory, because I'd only ever read it, that's my excuse, I've only ever read it. Sometimes when you read stuff on a textbook, you sort of, you say it in your own way, which isn't often right. So cache memory is a store of data that allows future requests to be served quicker. In the uh, topic number two, in the CPU video, we looked at processor RAM, so you can have uh, different cache caches in your computer. Um, an example is in a web browser. So what it does, cache memory is quick to read and write. It's very quick. It's quicker than RAM, uh, which means that everything accessed is very quick to access. So data that's chosen to be stored in a cache is often such that it's frequently accessed. So if you look at a browser example, Google Chrome is quite fast because everything's stored. Um, uh, sorry, because Chrome has quite a lot of cache, which means that your favorite websites, websites you access a lot like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Google, um, but the website data is stored in this little cache. I mean, it's a really small amount, it's a small amount of cache. So that whenever you access those websites, they're quick, they load quickly, they load almost instantaneously, which obviously saves you time for the long run. So finally, we're going to look at flash memory. So flash memory is sort of a emerging technology. It's actually been around since the 1980s, but recently it's been realised that they can replace a lot of the secondary storage that we um, often use. So um, flash memory is a type of non-volatile memory, again, which means that it doesn't lose its data when it's turned off. Um, and it's also, it uses something called solid state technology, meaning that it has no moving mechanical parts. I think it's really interesting. I don't totally know how it works, I'll be honest, it's very complicated. But it does use the logic gates we were talking about in the last video. So it uses, I believe it uses NAND gates, I'm not 100% sure, so not AND gates. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure on that. But it uses all these little logic circuits, I mean, not... When I say loads, I mean millions, billions of them, maybe trillions in some cases, of these circuits that allow the data to be stored using binary, which is, I think, is really cool. Uh, anyway, uh, solid state drives are a, a form of flash memory. You also have memory sticks that you plug into a USB drive. You also have um, camera uh, memory uh, memory cards. A bit of a mind blank there. So uh, SSDs, solid state drives, are a form of flash memory that are being developed recently. So five years ago. Um, you may not have ever heard of an SSD, they may be, their capacity might have only been 30 gigabytes, but now you can have ones for a, a terabyte, um, maybe even larger, I'm not 100% sure, but they are really expensive, they're far more expensive than um, hard drives because they are sort of an emerging technology. So they're an example of how new technology has led to computers being faster because flash memory um, storage devices are really quick to access compared to a hard drive so I would definitely in 10-15 in years I reckon every computer will have these and they'll be super quick and have a super high capacity anyway um, thanks a lot for watching rewatch it pause it whatever you need to do to understand this um, and hopefully you enjoyed and it was useful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video thank you